the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I really believe with all my heart that tonight will be an extraordinary night. I believe this from the depth of my heart. And one more time, I truly want to appreciate Reverend Edward. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor to bring the word of the Lord to the people in this church and this region. And I truly celebrate every father, every man and woman of God in this city. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, I'm only going to be teaching for a few minutes just to set the atmosphere and then we'll trust the Lord to do marvelous things. Why do we come to the Lord? We come to him because we love him. We come to him because we believe him. But we come to him because we know the Bible says in Hebrews 11 and verse 6 that there is a name he is called the rewarder of they that diligently seek him. That means when you seek him, the Bible says for everyone that seeketh, it, it's a law, provided you seek, you will find. Hallelujah. And so I trust that God will do us good tonight and bless our hearts in the name of Jesus. Please be seated. I'd like you to pay attention. Just a few minutes with the word. For those of you who were not here yesterday, we've been dealing with a number of teachings just ar around the team. Yesterday, we looked at the desire of David. Psalm 27, David said, One thing have I desired, and that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. David was communicating his desire. We challenged ourselves yesterday to love and to seek him above things. That the state of your heart is the principal determinant of the dimension and the extent of the presence that you carry more than spiritual activities it is the state of your heart no wonder david was called a man after god's heart hallelujah praise the lord then this morning we we're able to look at a number of things the way the reality of the divine life the implication of the indwelling spirit within a man that there are implications when the holy spirit comes to tabernacle representing the life of god in an individual there is an implication we spoke about the reality of our oneness with christ as an overflow the basis for the manifestation of divinity in and through us we did speak about our positional advantage according to Ephesians chapter 2. It says we have been raised up with Christ and we have been made to sit 
far above principalities, powers, thrones, dominions, every name that is named, not only in this world, but even that which is to come. Hallelujah. And I did share, especially with the ministers, three areas where the church must excel and the areas that represent the jurisdictions of attack, especially in this end time. Number one, we spoke about church growth, that it is important that souls be won. It is important that people come to the house of the Lord. The idea that the house of the Lord should not be filled is false. It is important that we continue to draw in harvests from everywhere so that many will know the Lord and many will come to acknowledge him and then to grow. We did speak about discipleship and doctrine, the principles that help mature believers to become sound and to be people of stature. Then we spoke about a number of other things. Um, we rounded up by talking about the place of finance and the fact that if you do not sustain that ability um, to be empowered as a minister it's an attack on people's finances and that is so that people will be distracted we look at Genesis 42 how that there was famine and Jacob told his sons I have heard that there is corn in Egypt I told us that there is nothing wrong with the corn part but where corn is located is where the problem is Egypt is a place that does not honor the value of the kingdom but if that is the only place where corn is found even the sons of the prophets will find their way to Egypt so that they will not die hallelujah praise the Lord we took our time to pray tonight I want to share with you very briefly a very deep spiritual mystery that has blessed me and I trust that God will grant us grace in the name of Jesus we're going to look at the mystery of the ark the mystery of the ark very briefly trying to understand the the spiritual significance of the ark of the covenant and how it brought mighty victory in the life of the nations past Israel particularly and how we can apply that to our lives today even as we prepare for the miracle service God has put in place all of the mechanisms that make for the excelling of the believer in Christ the church is a supernatural church believers are supernatural beings because we are recipients of this divine life but then like Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 would say it will take knowledge specific spiritual knowledge to bring us into the experience of these things that the divine life has brought Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 says having their understanding darkened says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them so in as much as it is a fact that we are recipients of the life of God our inability to have the requisite level of spiritual illumination may cause us to not manifest the reality of this God life that is within us are we together Psalms 82 from verse 5 says they know not neither will they understand it says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations are out of course it says I have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high it says but ye shall die like men men verse 7 and fall like one of the princes so it is not enough to just be recipients of eternal life the life of God it takes knowledge it takes light spiritual illumination to walk in the reality of this Jesus Christ wept twice as recorded in the Gospels the first reason why he wept was when he was told that Lazarus had died and he came to the tomb of Lazarus he wept and they say oh how he loved him the second time Jesus would weep was when he stood and looked over Jerusalem and said oh Jerusalem Jerusalem he says if you had known even in this time the things that make for your peace 
he says but they are hidden from you so we need light we need knowledge we need illumination paul prayed over the church in ephesus and he cried unto the lord he said that their eyes be enlightened flooded with light that they may know knowledge is very important you see this is the difference between the supernatural and magic magic does not depend on knowledge it does not depend on relationship the power of god is a derivative of his word when you want to experience the power of god it comes at the instance of his word habakkuk chapter 3 when you read from verse 3 and 4 a scripture that has blessed me very much particularly verse 4 the amplified rendition says that there was light that emanated the brightness of the light that came from the horns from his hand and it says in that light was the hiding place of his power so when the light of god comes his power comes to honor that light the assignment of the anointing is to insist that the word does not look like a lie so without the word the anointing has no assignment the assignment of the word of god is to validate that which has come from the word when the word of god comes then his power can now find its place in the midst of his people are we learning The Bible records that Moses had a very interesting encounter and in Exodus chapter 25, please turn there, we'll hurry up for the sake of time. Let's begin our reading from verse 10. Moses was, an ins was instructed by God himself and he was told to build an ark. Thou shall make an ark of shitting wood, he says two cubits and all of that and he gave all of the dimensions the extended reading is down to verse 22 and you'll see that he was instructed to construct an ark made of very precious wood and the remaining part of it is history we see that eventually that ark would be a representation of his presence to the nation of Israel. And in the presence of that ark, they wrought victory to a point where the hidden nations took note of the fact that every time they came to battle, especially carrying the ark, victory was guaranteed. They so feared the ark, they would tell themselves who could stand against this God of the Hebrews. Because the ark was a representation of the presence of God. God in the midst of his people. God in the midst of his people. Now, I'm not, I'm not here to deal with the entire exegesis of the whole story around the construction of the ark and so on and so forth. I just want to show you the principle of victory by carrying the ark. Because this is a miracle service. So I want to help us even as we prepare for what God is going to be doing tonight. To understand how you can perpetually walk in victory. By understanding the implication of carrying the ark. Hallelujah. The ark was a mysterious object that hosted the presence of God and brought great victory they were not even allowed to open it and see it because of how sacred it was but then the ark also was a mysterious weapon of destruction and a mysterious weapon of victory it seemed to be able to destroy without mercy and to bring victory completely what sort of a mysterious object was this carried on the shoulder of priests it would wrought victory for them even in the time of war when you read first samuel chapter 4 for the sake of time we may not go there but let me just give you the story chapter 4 chapter 5 chapter 6 and chapter 7 of first samuel it gives us a very serious detail now this was at the time theologically or historically speaking this was at the time when 
Eli, there were many compromises that were happening in the temple. Are we Bible students? He had two sons, Hophni and Phinehas. And these gentlemen were carrying out all kinds of atrocities in the temple. And the Bible notes that their father, who was a priest, was aware. Many times he was cautioned, but then he didn't seem to pay attention at all. And then God sent a prophet to come to Eli and to warn him to say because of this that has happened destruction is imminent the nation of israel is going to suffer because of this that you have done by the time we get to first samuel chapter 4 we see that the philistines came to battle and then the nation of israel went there and they were so defeated they were defeated in a way that was it brought great there was casualty and they returned back and requested they said look let's go to shiloh and they carry the ark and come with it and even though they brought the ark they were still defeated in fact the bible says it when you read chapter 4 the bible says as soon as the people saw the ark they began to rejoice thinking it will bring them victory and even with the ark there because of the state of their heart remember what we dealt with yesterday so the ark is not just a magical weapon that works anyhow it depends on many factors that must be put in place because they carried the same ark to battle and the philistines defeated them and then the ark was captured we're bible students isn't it yes then came a report to Eli who was about 97 years old he was an old man who was sitting and they brought him reports they said the ark of the Lord has been captured and in that process your sons Hophni and Phinehas have died but that was not even his concern as soon as he heard that the ark of the Lord was captured the Bible says he fell and because he was an old man he broke his neck and died there and as soon as that report got to the wife of Phinehas, the Bible records that she was already pregnant and almost due with child. As soon as she had that labor kicked in immediately and she pushed and gave birth and in her pain, she named the child e Kabod, And he said, because the glory of the Lord has departed. If the ark has been taken, then it means there is no possibility of victory for this nation and she named her child as a memorial that israel had lost everything that the departure of the ark was also the departure of the glory the departure of the relevance of israel are we together let's read chapter 5 chapter 5 of first samuel now arise, O oh Lord, would you come to your resting place, you and the ark of your might, and then we will rejoice as we close in your righteousness, we celebrate. hallelujah will it be projected okay let me just use my bible so the philistines captured the ark and they were happy watch this now i will just rush and then we'll read some part i'd like us to read verse 5 because at uh, chapter 5 because it's very important now they captured the ark in chapter 4 and they were rejoicing they took the ark and they went and kept it in their midst and the bible says trouble started for them immediately that they carried that ark just thinking it was an object and they started to die all kinds of destruction started happening in their camp no one was saying anything but there was such destruction that was happening but one of it that was very very important the bible says 5 verse 1 let me read it says and the philistines took the ark of god is is very brief it's just 12 12 verses the philistines took the ark of god and brought it from ebenezer unto ashdod and when the philistines took the ark of god 
and they brought it to the house of their God called Dagon and they set it by Dagon the Bible says verse 3 and when they of Ashdod rose early on the morrow behold Dagon was fallen to his face before the ark of the Lord they took Dagon and set him in his place again a God that cannot raise himself up how can he raise other people up you see how unwise idol worship is he fell just from the top to the ground and you want to leave people out of the pit and when they rose up early in the morning behold Dagon was fallen upon his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord and the head of Dagon and both the palm of his hands were cut off from the threshold only the storms of Dagon was left unto him therefore neither the priest of dragon of Dagon nor any of them that came to Dagon's house tread upon on the threshold of Dagon in Ashdod unto this day it says but the hand of the Lord was heavy upon them they took the ark to the wrong place desecrated it kept it carelessly and God said my presence does two things it can bless and it can destroy depending on how the state of your heart the hand of the Lord came in honor to that ark and the Bible says it destroyed them and smote them when you read verse 7 when the men of Ashdod saw that it was so they said the ark of the God of Israel shall not abide with us for his hand is sore upon us and upon Dagon my goodness my God that means something can happen to you that the devil can say go go away look at these people are negotiating they took something that they did not understand the implication of and now they started having a meeting among themselves what is this trouble we have brought to ourselves let's find a way of taking it out of this place the Bible says they gathered all the lords of the Philistines verse 8 unto them and said what shall we do with the ark of the God of Israel and they answered let the ark of the God of Israel be carried about unto God when you read on they took it to God and after they carried it the hand of the Lord came upon that city descended upon the city and started causing havoc within that city it was a great destruction verse 9 says and he smote the men of the city both small and great and then the ark of the Lord was taken to Ekron and when they got to Ekron the Ekronites started crying saying they have brought about the ark of the God of Israel to us to slay us and our people so they gathered together the lords of the Philistines and said send away the ark of the God of Israel let it go again to his own place that it slay us not and our people for there was a deadly destruction throughout all the city and the hand of God was heavy there and the men that died and the men that died not were smitten with the emeralds and the cry of the city went up to heaven now when you read all of this you find out that everywhere the ark of God was mismanaged with dishonor and lack of discernment if the ark was not neutral it was either blessing or cursing they carried the ark and thought it would be an artifact that they would keep and God said no this is a representation of my presence I instructed Moses himself and he carried that ark and took it in a wrong place and it caused havoc now for time's sake when you read chapter 6 and then you go to chapter 7 particularly the people began to cry and Samuel the prophet came and told them he said look the reason why the beauty and the potential the power the protection of this ark is not working is because of the state of your heart if you will repent and acknowledge and and give up this your gods all of these gods of the Philistines that you've gotten now if you will take them away then you will have your relationship restored paraphrasing 
Samuel verse 7 and 3. Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel saying, If ye do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, and put away the strange gods of Ashtaroth among you and prepare your hearts unto the Lord and serve him only. He will deliver you out of the hands of the Philistines. And the people responded and they said, Balim and Ashtaroth, we will not serve you again. We will serve the Lord only. And he gathered them together. And the Bible lets us know that when they got to Mizpah, the news got among the Philistines that these people had come again. But they did not know that the state of their hearts were now correct and so the philistines came as before don't mind the act that they had didn't they have it before it did not work this time around there was utter defeat they defeated the philistines and chased them down because their hearts were right you see why we took our time to deal with the desire of david the presence of god desiring the presence of god has implications the Bible records that there was great defeat for the Philistines and the cities which the Philistines had taken from Israel were restored verse 14 says from Ekron even to Gath it delivered everything and there was peace between the Israel and the Amorites because the ark was restored and their hearts were also restored can I tell you this? From scripture we see that the ark brought great victory. When the state of the heart, the careers of that ark, their relationship with God was put in place, the ark was able to produce wonders in their lives. Now, my concern tonight is not really the ark. My concern tonight is the construction and the content. The Bible lets us know very quickly that according to Hebrews chapter 9, Paul was speaking. When you read from verse 1 and 4, 1 to 4, Paul gives us um, a picture. He gives us a very graphic representation of all that was represented in the ark. And I want us to look at it very briefly. Ready? Hebrews chapter 9. That's all right. I'll turn back. And read then verily he said the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary we're reading to verse 4 for there was a tabernacle made the first wherein was the candlestick the table and the shoe bread which is called the sanctuary after and after the second veil the tabernacle which is called the holiest of all read with me verse 4 please if you can see it ready one to read which had the golden censer uh -huh, and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold wherein was the golden pot that had manna and the Aaron's rod that budded and the tables so we know that there were three things from Exodus and from Hebrews that the ark it was so designed to be a a, um, it was like a chest a triangle a, a, a rectangular chest are we together that was overlaid when you read from chapter 25 from verse 10 to 22 of exodus it gives you all the details of the construction of the ark but then it says it was designed in a way and a manner that it was overlaid with what we call the messy seat and the Lord made a very interesting statement. He says, above the mercy seat, below the cherubims, there I will meet with you and I will relate with you intimately. There was a location. If you can prepare that ark, he says, I will meet with you. Very important. So we know that the construction of the ark and the content of the ark all together where number one listen pay attention the content of the ark now we're dealing with it one it had the wood the construction of the wood and do you know when you read exodus chapter 25 
beginning from verse 10 God kept telling man even though my presence will come you do it you do this one you do this one so the very construction of the ark of covenant required the participation of man this is the first thing we have to understand about the construction and the content it was not god god gave the commands but man was instructed he was given the dimensions he was told what to do but he had to do it that means if you want to experience the glory of god there is a role that you have to play it is not all up to god and it is not all up to you there is a participatory role that man will always play as far as hosting the grace the power the wisdom the presence of god is concerned the wood was constructed by man it took the meticulousness the discipline the diligence of going to look for the exact wood and the specification god came to rest upon it but it was man who designed it this is the first information i want you to understand so the construction the wooden construction represents the participation of man then number two the bible talks about the covenants or the commandments the table remember the the ten commandments that moses received from the lord and then in anger he threw it and then he was made to construct the stones again and god again wrote on those tablets and he says take those two tablets the commandments number three we see the pot or the omer that was full of manna that fell from heaven in exodus chapter 16 exodus chapter 16 when you read from verse 31 to 35 exodus chapter 16 31 to 35 they murmured against god and against moses how that they were hungry and god sent manna manna from heaven that the bible tells us was the bread of angels and every day they were asked to pick and then on the sabbath they were asked to pick and by the next day it did not decay and he was given an instruction he says take some of this and put in the pot let it be as a testament as a memorial of that supply and that provision and that power of god are we learning number three we see the rod of aaron that bordered when you read number 17 the whole text is in number 17 from verse 1 to 10 but particularly verse 9 and 10 numbers chapter 17 this was a leadership problem by the way man of god if you are having a very serious leadership problem in your church or in your organization read number 17 because god himself brought an end to every kind of controversy around leadership he said take the rods of everybody from every tribe the 12 tribes he said place it before the tabernacle the ark he says whichever will board also take the one of aaron so that they will know that my ordination to his priesthood was not human and the bible says by the next day so they they will not blame moses again there are times you make decisions as a leader and people think it's favoritism people think you are just being sentimental there are times you need to trust god to do something that everybody will know this one is the hand of god and an end came to all the quarreling and the arguments the bible says so god instructed immediately he said the rod of aaron that bought it put it also at the ark let it be a memorial so we see that the ark of covenant basically contained three things inside the table of testaments or commandments number two the rod of aaron that bordered are we together and then number three the pot that was full of manna and then overlaying the ark was what we call the mercy seat why am i taking our time to break these elements of the ark because if it is the glory of god you want to see rest if you want to become a mobile ark every one of these things that was in the ark must be in you too 
if you want to replicate the ark in your life then you have to follow the pattern of the construction also if anything is found wanting as far as the elements are concerned you may not be able to replicate the ark that hosts the presence of God are we blessed so let's look at the significance of these elements and then we pray number one the first lesson we have to learn from the ark is that it was constructed by man the vessel that carried the ark was a representation of man here's what the bible says nevertheless the foundation of the lord standeth sure having this seal it says the lord knoweth them that are his and let every man that named the name of christ depart from iniquity and then the next verse says but in a great house he lists four kinds of vessels and their implication he says there are vessels of wood there are vessels of clay there are vessels of silver there are vessels of gold he says some vessels are unto dishonor and there are vessels that are unto dishonor if you want to become that vessel here is the condition if a man will purge himself he says that man will be a vessel unto honor meat or fit for the master's use so the first thing we have to deal with is man's participation. The discipline and the diligence of allowing your life to become that worthy habitation that can host the fullness of the presence and the power of God. If you're with me, say amen. amen. The ark was made of choice wood, expensive, valuable material. It was not just made of careless wood it was it was meticulously built by the intelligence and the artistry of man number two for the sake of time what is the significance of the covenants the commandments they represent laws and they represent instructions can i tell you this if you want to host the presence of god within your life must be an accommodation for the principles of the kingdom and instructions the commandments represent instructions and these instructions notice that principally these instructions come from and through men they come from god but they come through men when god delivered the ten commandments he was the one who wrote it but the person who interpreted and explained it was moses the man any man who is not given to the reception of divine instructions can never truly host the glory of god are we learning something now we are constructing the ark in our own lives now that the first element that is needed is you the vessel must be sufficient not in yourself necessarily but that purging by the blood by the word to become a vessel of honor and then instructions we thrive and we excel and we command victory in this kingdom on the strength of the laws and the instructions that we receive this is why jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 says and i will give you shepherds pastors after my heart it says that they will feed you with knowledge and with understanding proverbs continue to ch to challenge us and said that the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom it says but fools despise instruction are we together you want to host superior dimensions of the glory of god especially in this end time if you want the ark to be experientially constructed in and through your life then you must be prepared to work with in keeping with the laws i'm not just talking of old or new testament i'm talking of laws the ordinances of the kingdom and then the instructions of the lord and thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying this is the way walk ye in it and if you do obey that instruction it says you will find rest for your soul are we learning the next element that must be captured in our life 
is the mystery of the rod of Aaron. The rod of Aaron validated the priesthood ministry of Aaron. So the rod there is a representation of priesthood. You want your life to be an expression of the ark. You must embrace the mystery of priesthood. And the primary assignment of priesthood is to burn that incense. The ministry of prayer. Your life will never truly be able to be a, a representation of the glory and the grace of God. If priesthood is absent in your life. Jesus came into the temple when he found people selling and buying and selling in the temple. The zeal of the Lord ate him up and the Bible says he took whip when he beat them up. This is what he said, my house. If it is truly my house, it shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. But you have turned it into a den of robbers. Many of you have heard me teach your house is either one of two things at any given time a house of prayer or a den of robbers a den of robbers means a place where thieves dwell and satan is the principal thief that can come so if your life is not a house of prayer as that temple the next thing it becomes is a den of robbers where the thief can come to steal to kill and to destroy There's no being neutral at any given time. This temple, your house, is either a house of prayer or a den of robbers. The robbers will come as mysterious demonic afflictions. The robbers will come as all kinds of oppressions. But when it becomes a house of prayer, the fire that is upon that altar will not allow any spirit that is not of the Christ to dwell there because the Bible says Jesus himself teaching said when a spirit is casted out of a man Jesus is teaching us now he says when that spirit comes out of a man it goes around through desert regions looking for a place not finding any place it will say I will return back there is something about the desert that makes the spirit not comfortable nobody is casting the spirit from the desert it will cast itself back and prefers staying in you do you know why because the desert is extremely hot so when your life simulates the condition of the desert that spirit will also not be able to stay within you was it not the fire from the fire that made the viper come out when there is no fire the viper can remain there priesthood hear me believers we must get to a point where genuine prayer becomes a lifestyle not something we do just to obtain things the primary assignment of prayer is for your transformation more than receiving requests the bible says and as he prayed speaking about jesus he says his garment his face became as white and his garment became as white and his countenance changed so prayer is principally a tool for transformation you evolve into superior versions of yourself when you pray you do not find your former self again after prayer the self that you now see is the powerful one is the great one is the anointed one bring a weak believer with no bearing in his life bring someone who does not know his left and his right submit him to the ministry of priesthood and watch an evolution happen a timid person will become a champion in the spirit if you want to host the glory of god especially in these end times let me tell you sincerely do not ignore the rod of aaron it's not just a rod it's a rod of priesthood you're not just going to stand and tell demons go away you will not just stand over cities and say i open the two lift gate no sir it will be at the instance of genuine priesthood he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray you have an assignment to register your name in the realm of the spirit so that demons will not just say jesus i know 
Paul I know add your name Joshua Selman I know because they are witnesses to your priesthood we are discussing the ark remember the wood of Achaia the cassia wood remember the commandments laws and instruction remember the rod of Aaron priesthood now the next is the pot or the omer that carried manna the manna there talks about the ministry of the word jesus himself was speaking about this in matthew 4 he said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word every word the manner that does not decay the manner that could not go through corruption and the only seed we know that is incorruptible is that which is by the word of god listen to me the word of god defines the jurisdiction of his commitment to the believer god cannot be committed to the believer outside of the scope that the word of god allows him he has chosen to exalt his word even above his name this is the difference between the faith life and superstition god is bound only by his word that means if you want to get god committed to your life it must be the the legal basis upon which you will place your demands must be scripture when satan came to him he didn't say i think he didn't say i wish he said it is written what gives us victory in this kingdom is what is written not what we want whatever you want you must find out whether it is written or not if what you want is not written it cannot happen what you want only happens when it is written please listen to me if you want to host the glory of god upon your life your church your business it must be a ministry that has respect and value for scripture it was written so that it cannot be changed it is written matthew chapter 13 and verse 11 jesus himself was teaching and he said it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven we reign in this kingdom on the strength of the mysteries that we sustain a mystery is a hidden body of truth that is privy to a group of people we rise in this kingdom on the strength of the mysteries that we know there are mysteries that control speed there are mysteries that control restoration there are mysteries that control lifting there are mysteries that control being anointed there are mysteries that control exemption there are mysteries that control prosperity there are mysteries that control influence your assignment is to walk in partnership with the spirit of grace and find for everyone that seek it find it the seed for finding is to seek if you do not seek you cannot have the harvest of finding proverbs chapter 18 and verse 1 says through desire a man having separated himself that he seeketh and he intermeddleth with all wisdom please let us obtain grace from god to go back to scripture and settle down otherwise our life will look superstitious yet will keep failing I believe the word of God why do I know the sick will be healed because it is written why do I know God will commit himself to your lifting tonight because it is written not because I am a man of God being a man of God is a secondary reason the primary reason why all things happen is because it is written John chapter 1 and verse 3 all things were made by him and without him without him means outside of his influence was not anything made that was made that means when you neglect the word of god the possibility of creation and manifestation has left you it has to be at the instance of the word 
Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 and 3 says, God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us in time past through the prophets had in these last days spoken to us through his son, which is the word, whom he had appointed to be heir over all things. And then when you read verse 3, he says, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding how many things upholding my tomorrow upholding my tomorrow upholding my tomorrow through the word of his power up upholding my future my confidence is beyond the advantage or the disadvantage in a territory your confidence must be based on it is written it is written why will you succeed i have a great father you are joking woe unto him that puts his strength in a man even the word himself use it is written to defend himself the word of god didn't say my opinion the word submitted to it is written can i tell you this you must know how to defend your victory it is written why should i leave this family it is not we are members of a particular church that is wonderful there is a place for prophetic covering but i tell you the real reason why we excel in this kingdom is because it is written remember the manner it was kept there as a memorial that there is no victory for you if it is not written anything that is not written cannot happen the anointing of the spirit does not work at random the anointing of the spirit follows what is written so if you are making claims in prayer there is a verification system in the realm of the spirit before the anointing begins to move on that wise the anointing does not just come because you want it to come the anointing verifies whether that desire is consistent with what is written preachers let's stop preaching what we want and preach what is because what we want will not come to pass until it is written let's sit down the lord is turning you into an ark now you know what makes the ark more than the object the participatory role that you have to play sitting down and waiting for god to do everything is a joke it took man to build the ark it will take you to make that place conducive for him you want to become an ark you must submit yourself to laws and instructions and then you must submit yourself to the ministry of priesthood you must learn to pray until you evolve into a vessel of honor you can pray yourself from wood and become clay pray yourself from clay and become silver pray yourself from silver until you become gold hear me when we pray we truly evolve yes sir the version of you your future is looking for has not yet become so your future is looking for a version of you that you have not become ah. the dream you saw about your greatness that dream was designed to happen to another version of you not this version and your destiny keeps waiting so it looks like you are not moving forward and god is saying no i want to bless you but there is a version of you that must carry that anointing the anointing you are looking for for nations cannot come on this version i'm seeing the spirit of prayer just coming on 11 people this is what i'm seeing please just help them 11 people 
Now you understand that prayer is for your growth, for your evolution. Hear me. Hear me. You can pray an old realm out of your life into a new season. You can use prayer to close seasons and open new ones. Can I be honest with you? If we truly want to become this ark we must obtain grace from god to move past just the realm of meeting needs to the realm where you stand with god and you can grow to a point of stature where god can trust you with the grace for nations not just things we're not talking about having one or two things that god can carry the destiny of a territory and say take if they are saved is your fault if they are not saved is your fault look at the rewards of those who were faithful with the talents that were given to them authority over nations believers let's return to the genuine ministry of priesthood more than just give me things i'm not saying those things are wrong you can listen to my message teach us to pray i taught there about the mysteries the dimensions of prayer there is a dimension of prayer that is for supplication and petitions but primarily prayer is a tool for fellowship and in that fellowship there is evolution you know you have met him because you change the protocol of encounter is that when you meet him you are changed and we all with unveiled face it says beholding the glory it's not the glory that changes it's you that changes hear me when the animals looked at what Jacob put, they were the ones who were changed into what they were seeing. And then, the manna, which is the word of God. Ignorance is dangerous in this end time. You must know what is written. Please sit down. The Bible basically contains three things. Am I wasting your time? every time you open up scripture the bible contains three things that you must never forget number one the bible contains promises the promises of god represent the scope of his commitment to you there are promises that he has made excellent things he has spoken about his zion you must know the promises of god as revealed from scripture what has god said he would do because when you can find what god said he will do i assure you he will do it genesis 21 and verse 1 please give it to us verse 1 and 2 genesis 21 read with me please one to read as he has uh-huh and the lord did unto sarah when he speaks he does except he has not said it so you must find his promises sarah conceived and bare abraham a son in her old age at the set time which the lord had spoken promises that's the first thing we search for in scripture every time you open your bible your eyes must look for promises lord what have you said concerning my life what have you said concerning my destiny it is only what he has said that comes to pass integrity is the ability to say and do if god has not said why should he do so when you find what he has said then because he's a god of integrity the Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. That means men lie. Men don't lie because they are bad. They lie because they are men. Hallelujah. God is not a man that he should lie. 
nor the son of man that he should repent you can trust what he said now listen carefully the second thing that is contained in scripture are principles principles represent the modus operandi of the kingdom how the kingdom operates when you study scripture you find therein principles jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16 he says to stand and to ask look at that path that old path stand in the way and ask for the old path he says wherein is the good way and when you have found it walk in it jesus the word also called himself the way there is a revelation of jesus called jesus the way how things are done in the kingdom there is a way god lifts people there is a way god restores there is a way god anoints there is a way god increases there is a way god def defends people you have to understand the ways of god before he showed moses his glory the first thing he showed moses were his ways so promises principles the third thing we find in scripture are prophecies revelations about the future to be able to give you hope and to give you comfort we find in scripture prophecies so that we know that we are overcomers because of the prophecies that we have seen every time you open your bible you are searching for these three things promises principles prophecies if your life is built upon the integrity of it is written the dust will come and go every other thing will come and go but because this house is built on a rock it will stand and it will remain the same thing that happened to the house on the sand happened to the house on the rock it was not the superstructure it was the foundation jesus said this is how i will build my church i will build my church with a formula and if this formula is is honored the gates of hell will not prevail against her build your life on scripture build your life on it is written and you have nothing to fear the uncertainties that plague our world the uncertainties that plague ministries plague regions are enough to make us fear but the word of god can give us confidence because we know that it is written prophecy already told us the end of it we know who has won ah. there are times that you are watching a movie and someone who has watched it before is sitting with you he cannot have your anxiety they kill the actor and you are, frust you are frustrated i've wasted one hour i thought this man will win and the person says you just keep watching and you are wondering what where is your confidence coming from the confidence is coming from the fact that he's watched it before he watched it right to the point that he saw the end and i can tell you this right here already told me the end of my life He will not suffer my food to be I carry your presence Who am I? Your mind is so full of me I have found the end of my destiny here That I know the thoughts that I think towards you say at the Lord that they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you a future and there is a difference between having a future and having an end you can have a future but maybe not have an end your today was a future to last week future is relative end is fixed I am secured in both I have a future and I have an end
dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline 